Have you been experiencing unexplained phenomenon? Is something shifting in nature? What if aliens are real? Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. Wow. Okay. So um, today we're just, we're rolling in cold. I don't know. <laughs> Coming in hot, actually, because <laughs> we just decided to hit record because we're having a meeting and it's been a little active, <laughs> a little active. I just saw a really big baseball size orb in my office. I just saw a shadow walk across this light beam that's behind me and I felt something touch my back. And unfortunately, (laughs) we didn't hit record in time to catch that. So that's also why we hit record so we can see if we can see anything else. But that's interesting because today, like we, we were kind of chatting about what to talk about. And one of the things that came up at least I I jotted this down. What are some unexplained phenomena that we've been experiencing, not just individually, but as a collective and kind of just going down that little rabbit hole, if you want to call it a conspiracy, I don't care, whatever. Right. We're just saying, what if, so what if we are experiencing unexplained phenomena? One of the reasons that we brought this forward is just because of all of the articles lately news outlets sharing information about these weather balloons or whatever you want to call them UAPs UAPs, 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 Mm -hmm. yeah spy tools you know we don't really know and I think it'll be difficult for us to know for sure at least as far as hearing it from reporters yeah government that kind of thing because we know a lot of that all of a lot of happenings that occur are kept in shadow from us. Yeah. This is We're true. kept in the dark on a lot of things that are happening worldwide. Yeah, I agree. So as we're recording this, just from our current standpoint, yesterday I was on the Inner Bloom podcast. And mm-hmm. before I was on that podcast as a guest, I had my one-on-one coaching with one of the co-hosts of that podcast, Ambrosia, and who we just recently had on the people's journey. So last Friday that was released. So go check that out. If you have not watched or listened to that episode, because incredible conversation, absolutely incredible conversation. And right when we were going live on that on that episode that they will have out on February 15th. Um, Ever since I've been very open, right? Even when I'm doing my closing session, it seems like I'm still very open. And, and just to explain what that is, when I open myself up to either do channeling or a reading or connecting with my guides or going into meditation, I, go through an opening ceremony so they understand that it's okay to communicate with me. Afterwards, I do a closing ceremony so they also understand that it's not okay anymore to communicate with me. But I've done one of those closing ceremonies today and I'm still being communicated with. (laughs) So I'm like, all right, all right, cool. Clearly there's something that needs to be said today and that's fine. I think what they said to me yesterday was already kind of, you know, Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, mind right. So let's do a quick recap. Well, what's been what's being I, said? Yeah. And we want to talk a quick recap about just in general what's being said. Right, right. So like I mentioned earlier, there's reports of several objects. I think at this point there's been four that have been shot down from the sky. Mm-hmm. And this has happened mainly over the U.S., but also over Canada. And mm-hmm. so Justin Trudeau has also been a part of these conversations and actions to bring these down out of the sky. The reports are, and again, I haven't read a lot. I kind of like Got limit it. things. So there's a boundary for me. What I do know, again, I've already stated, one of them was like an octagon shape. So it actually has edges. It's not just a round balloon. Theories are that it's a weather balloon, that it's uh, spy tools from China, that it's a UFO. Mm. 
So these are all possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. I, they are all possibilities and probabilities. Mm-hmm. I, from what my guides were saying is that it is on both ends of the spectrum. It is in part them fewer them being not from this planet, non-human, non-human. And then in part, it is also a distraction and it's, it's man-made human made. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was interesting to get that perspective or to get that bit of information. Sorry. Did you see that? (laughs) We, 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 (laughs) anyway, 7-Eleven got it. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. So I just want to, I'm going to say this really quick because my camera is fixed. Okay. So do you see this jumping? Yeah. My camera is fixed on top of my monitor. It it doesn't move. It never moves. Let me shake. I'm going to shake the desk. And I'm okay. shaking it hard so you can get perspective of and what it, that normally yeah, looks like. Yeah, yeah, it moves front to back, but right. it's it's still shifting like side to side. I know. Oh my god, I have goosebumps. <laughs> I feel like there is a party in my room energetically right now. There so, feels like a lot going on in this room, and it's just me in here. <laughs> so physically, at least. Let me ask you then, do you feel like now is the time to channel? We might as well. Clearly they want to talk. So yeah, let's just, let's just see what they say. (laughs) No time like the present. (laughs) All right. All right. As you're going in, can you tell what the energies feel like? I excited. It's very excitable. It's kind of like, you know, when you get, when you were a kid and you got someone's attention after you've been trying for a while and you're like, oh, 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 oh," you know, like it feels like that. Okay. Yeah. A very stewy family guy moment. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Interesting. They're showing me. Mm. I'm getting a TV screen where they put a black bar across it. News, like blacking news. it out? Mm-hmm. Like censoring? Mm-hmm. Like censoring. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. Okay. Sorry. So my visions have been getting a little bit clearer when I close my eyes, especially after I did a meditation today. And I'm seeing images very clearly today. So I just got a being, not human. And it had a robe like tube, robe tube looking thing going around like the back of its head and like, around the neck, but then down the front. Almost looked like it was a robe, but it wasn't. This feels very fifth element. Like I'm so. I was thinking fifth element. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> the blue like, lady. She, she had the. Yeah. 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 Ex- except it's just like a single instead of like, you know how she had the two. Like it's connected at the top. And yeah. It comes around. Okay. It, I'm sorry. It, it jumped in and I was like, hey. <laughs> so a little nerve wracked at the moment. <laughs> are you able so. to tell how many energies are around you in this moment? I said 12 immediately. Okay. So and that's a lot. Is there a specific reason that they're here? Because I'm communicating is what they just said. And is there something specific they want to focus on as far as a topic or something that they want to communicate? They just said we're coming. <gasps> oh my god! I'm a, I am in full body chills at the moment. I'm so sorry. I have goosebumps again. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. But I thought you were already here. Mm. Yes and no. Dimensionally. They said dimensionally, yes. Physically, no. So it's almost like like they're... Have you seen those sci-fi shows? I, I'm thinking of like space, you know, <laughs> doing really good at my English today, where they're almost looking at like this dome type thing that is showing another planet or another space as far as what's going on. And so they're able to like view and interact a little bit in that way. 
without actually physically being here. And not that they're, and that's like the way that I'm perceiving it or explaining the level at which they're yeah. here, kind of. Is that, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. Is that kind of what they're, I got a different being coming. This one has green arms. Okay. That's literally, I can't see anything else but the green arms. Like they're wearing a vest. Like a, and then I'm just seeing the green arms and the, the rest of it's dark. <laughs> it said blocking that on purpose. <laughs> I was about to ask, why are you hiding that from us? Is it because it's would be disturbing? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it would shock me a little too much. So gratitude. Thank you. <laughs> so we're coming how will that be presented to us when they arrive as loving as we can is what I heard Mm. in our distortions Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that there's going to be people that have more of a individualized or smaller group experiences more often first but they're, they're definitely, this is now the second time I've been given the message that they're going to be very presented. So do you remember that documentary on Amazon? What was it like unawakened? That's so. where they were doing the meditations together and like, you're able to use the app. I don't remember the app. Oh, doctor. Yeah. He is a doctor. He's like an yeah. ER doctor. Oh my gosh. What is, what is his name? That's going to bug me. I think I have the app. Five. Five contact. CE5. Yes. Who's the guy? Is it Greer? Greer. Yeah. So that documentary, is it like those types of smaller group experiences that when we are collectively together coming into a higher vibration, are those the groups that will be experiencing your presence? Or will it be all of Earth? It is best to ensure, I'm repeating word for word now, Mm -hmm. it is best to ensure that we approach those that have collectively agreed upon reuniting, is what they said, with their star families. Little by little, they're showing me a lot. They're giving me these flash images. They're showing me like all these like people like walking in unity, like approaching some scene Wow, it's like a movie reel that just happened. Like, like all these people walking and like approaching a scene of like, holy. <laughs> but then they like realize that they that everything feels familiar all of a sudden. So this is like that quick awakening that they were talking about. That, I just like, wrote down family reunion. Did you really? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Will there be people that on earth that still are unable to perceive their presence? Like see them? Mm-hmm. Like they say that they're coming. I said no. Okay. So still it's that vibrational difference that can permit one to be able to perceive and experience an interaction. It's funny because like I've been saying this for a long time. Sorry. This whole idea no, that no, aliens have been here. We just have not been able to perceive them because they're in a higher vibration and that's why we can't perceive them because we're still in this lower 3D vibrational reality. I always love, I cannot remember who I heard it from or what, but I always remember the, the reference to the ceiling fan speed, right? So when the ceiling fans on low and you can kind of follow the blades and that is its representation of, cause you can see it of a third dimensional reality, right? And then as you speed up the ceiling fan, when it goes faster and faster, it almost disappears, right? Yes. And so that's kind of how they're able to have that cloaking. Right. Mm. Right. I feel like there's someone standing like right here. So I'm going to ask who it is. Okay. We're going to get a name. Let's get a name. Oh, interesting. So I immediately got the hands holding an orb image the like hands on that card uh there's a which... tarot card mm. that you pulled yeah and he's got a bluish purple robe hold on i remember seeing that 
was it this card? We're gonna we're gonna flash this up on the screen. So oh, I'm gonna take away the other three cards for our collective reading today, but I'm gonna flash this one up on the screen really fast. Was it this card? It was not this deck. Not this deck. Okay. But very similar. Like okay. Interesting. Playing around with our pictures. <laughs> I love this new this new setup. So yeah, so, that's very interesting. Let's just play a game here. Like, what if aliens are real? <laughs> what would that mean for us as Earthlings? I feel human non-channeling information, Shira, right? I feel like it's going to vastly wake a whole bunch of people up that had kind of not been going through any of that or have suppressed it. I feel like this year in general is going to be a year of, you know, if you want to timeline it, the next several months, <laughs> I think is going to really be a push towards people becoming more of their true selves. And by doing that, it does require you to kind of wake up to whatever reality you're in, right? And so my thought process with that is that we're going to start seeing things more clearly than how we've been seeing them. And if your if your veil has been the the blind following of whatever's going on in the media or, you know, just doing the day-to-day -day things that you've always been told to do and feeling a bit of a discourse to you or a discord to you, I feel like you're going to really start to kind of wake from that that dream state. And I was doing a a pretty significant meditation today. And for the first time, I wasn't using any kind of noise to do my meditation, at least for the first time in a very long time. And it was powerful. And the clearest of message that they gave me was that being your true self and getting into who you truly are and your actual like purpose on why you came here is going to be more prominent. I think the visitations that we're receiving or the the lowering of this limitation of our th three-dimensional sight to be honest with you like I think that it has just got a lot to do with becoming who we truly are I think it's going to unlock a lot of the people's abilities that have been suppressed for a long period of time I know that I've personally suppressed a lot of my own abilities and have been quickly learning that we are capable of a lot more than we thought and I think that it's going to allow people to question their faith. And I think that's the part that's going to be a lot, a lot scarier for, for people. Right. I mean, let's think about it. Like hypothetically, I'm kind of laughing when I so say we're this. doing this. Yes. <laughs> we're doing it. Hypothetically. We're saying um, what if. Yes. Right. We get visited in the next six months, but it's like global. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees them. Those that have been interested in seeing them and those that have had have said that they don't exist and that everyone sees them. Let's just say that you've got now very specific groups of individuals that are going to question everything they've ever been taught, ever learned. Even those, even those that even practice, you know, spirituality or, a, or believe in aliens and all the things, there's still always that little thing that if they haven't seen it for themselves, there's still that little question in the back of, the, of their mind, right? That somewhere in their subconscious, because it hasn't been proven. And if they're not following blind faith or belief into what they feel is right, or trusting their own intuition into that information, right? It's still going to shock them. It's still going to it'll still wake you up in a whole other way. And you'll start to have these moments where you're like, as an example, remember that time when somebody said, oh, I think you're Palladian or I, I feel like in your energy, you're Palladian and you and you probably were like, oh yeah, I feel that. That's cool. And then somewhere in the back of your mind, you had this question mark like, mm, is that real? Yeah. <laughs> like imagine oh. visitation that proves that was real. Like, that that's a whole nother level. That's a game changer in my in my opinion, right? These are like the kind of thoughts that I have, like what happens to humanity at that point? Mm -hmm. I I think there's gonna be quite a bit of chaos, right? So for how many decades have we been taught that we need to fear extraterrestrials? Fear the unknown. Yeah. Fear what we cannot control. It's been shoved down our faces since like 
the first movie ever came out or or the fact that only the military can handle the unknown right that you need protection this whole idea that they our big government is protecting all of us from all these outside influences but what they're not protecting us from is the inside influences correct because i can tell you right now that we've been contacted and we, if you want to if we want to call it spiritually right i'll just say it I can channel beings and some of those beings may or may not be from planet earth. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And that's why I was trying to reference the CE five in the documentary. If you haven't seen that documentary, I highly recommend it. It's fascinating. It is. But in the documentary, they in a group did these meditations together to raise their vibrations and they were able to record like video record these light beings mm. around the group and they've shown up in pictures i've seen people's pictures oh, yeah. like real like not edited like hey i took this picture come check this out like i've seen mm. it and there's no mistaken that it's a being and it's got a little outfit on and everything <laughs> you can't you can't miss and it and so if these beings are if they're real if these beings are vibrating at a higher level they are living on a higher frequency because we're in this 3d experience, this lower dimensional reality, it's harder for us to perceive. So if we think of an ant on a piece of paper, and if you put something in front of the ant on the piece of paper, it's going to perceive it and it's going to go around it. But if you put your hand just above it and just hold it there, not touching it, does it even perceive your hand? I have not asked an ant, but the idea is, is that they're not able to perceive that because it's not in their two dimensional reality. Right. And so same thing with, with these higher vibrational beings, we are not able to perceive them in higher dimensions. It's just not in our faculties to comprehend. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I think personally speaking, so something just touched me on my shoulder (laughs) i'm just gonna let me just ask who this is i i'm just gonna ask who this is it took me off my game for a little i was about to have a whole conversation with you but now all i can think about is what just touched my shoulder so if you're open to it what do they have to say so they came in with um images of So when I was a kid and still as an adult, bunnies are my favorites. Okay. So stuffed bunnies I would always get for Easter and I still own little stuffed bunnies, whatever, not from real bunnies, but like, you know, teddy bear type stuffed animals. Yeah. Thank you. And I had to make sure I clarified that. So not taxidermy, (laughs) not taxidermy. (laughs) Um, I would cry. So they showed me that in like a cartoon kind of way like hi it seemed very innocent and i got the sense that one of these beings is with its child so that was interesting so just let me okay they they confirm that so one of these beings is with it is with its child like as in this is supposed to be a part of all of our experience the youth those that have been around for a long time whatever their lifetime span is i don't know but like our experience, their experience, it's soul contracted for it to happen for all of us, not just us humans. When they explain mm. that, that's what they mm. just explained to me. They're expo- they're also supposed to experience the polarity here, but they're, they're referencing Gaia again. They're supposed to help her as well. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense why they're coming Yeah. now. Maybe not right now, but you know, I mean, mm. that's, Oh, that's interesting. (laughs) One of the questions that, you know, I had written down was, is something shifting in nature? (laughs) And I don't know if anybody else has like heard about these things, but there's been some talk about poles shifting and Mm. how that's happened in the past and our weather patterns changing as far as the, what do they call them? Like the... The streams in the Atlantic. Yeah. 
I, I tried to read that article. Yeah. I was so lost. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is way too scientific. So yeah, I was waiting for like a paragraph in that article to just kind of be like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> let me explain what I just said. It never <laughs> did that, you know? So I was like, I had to read it a few times. <laughs> yes, we know that weather patterns have been changing. So they've been blaming it on global warming, but you know, maybe this is partly a natural cycle also. If you look back at, we'll call them ancient texts, most of them are religious texts, whether that's like the Quran, the Bible, the Old Testament, there has been, and, and, and even in the rocks, right? If you look at like geologically, there is evidence that proves that there have been massive floods mm. at some point in history. Gotcha. And I wonder if that's like a cycle of cleansing in a way. Oh, it's so interesting that you just said that. <laughs> because that's exactly, you know, yeah. So, okay. Before I <laughs> finish your sentence. <laughs> no? Okay. No, no. That's yeah. exactly something that you received. Yeah. So, okay. Before we go down that, I'm going to say this because I don't want any of our listeners to panic. <laughs> Like, I want, I want you to stay in a place of remembrance for a second. So if you're listening to this, do me a favor. Close your eyes. Not if you're driving, please. Get someplace safe. Close your eyes. And I want you to just take a great big deep breath in however you feel like doing it. Through the nose, through the mouth. And I want you to fill up your lungs and fill up your belly. And then I want you to take a nice big exhale out. And if you need to make noise while you do it, go for it. Okay. And now what I want you to do is I want you to imagine the brightest of white, pure white light. And it's emanating from the center of your chest. And as it emanates from the center of your chest and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and it creates this beautiful bubble of light surrounding your entire being your entire body. And if you so choose, you can keep using that brightness of the light coming from your chest, protruding out, creating this bubble. And the bubble can just expand as far as you'd like it to, whether that's just surrounding you, whether that's surrounding you and your pets or you and your child or you and your spouse or you and your whole household or your entire car, if you're sitting in your car still and you're practicing this. While you're in this light, while you are surrounded by this light, you can ask this light to stay ever present. You can ask your guides to guard this light. You can also ask your higher self to only ever communicate to you through this light. All beings around you are only allowed to communicate to you through this white light in full remembrance that they come from love. Only beings in full remembrance that they come from love are allowed to communicate with you or myself or anyone around us. With that being said, <laughs> I want you to remember that you are all beings of love. Every single one of us, that we are all pieces of source and that we are here for whatever time frame we're supposed to be here for, to learn whatever lesson we need to learn to experience whatever experience we came here to experience. If that experience from the perception of a human being on planet Earth doesn't feel good, you get to take that away at the end of it all. You get to remember that this is what you learned. This is what you experienced. What's next? So if you can hold on to that for just a minute, if you can remember that for just a minute, let go of the fear for anything else that's to come. Because that part's not necessary in this space and time that we're talking. And timelines change. And, and they always just, change. It's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This so, is not set in stone. I, I had to say many all of that. Possibilities. <laughs> that is correct. So, all right. What I have seen is a refresh in multiple areas. The Great Reset. Yeah, I'm going to call it a refresh. It's like refreshing. So <laughs> like cucumber water. <laughs> Does it feel better saying it that way? You know? <laughs> so it has an, an element of, ooh, okay. 
they're referencing a scenario that happened over the last two and a half years and how that helped clean our air, regardless of what it did to a whole bunch of people. That was not great. So we're going to leave it at that. But that was a version of what I'm talking about. Trying to assist Earth. Correct. So in other words, we were here. We were supposed to experience that. It also woke a lot of people up, including myself, mm -hmm. right? So I will say that hearing, seeing that image, it's interesting, but I also feel okay about it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things to remember is like, again, everything is for our greatest and highest good. This life experience is just that. It's just this life experience. It is, it's a video game. And we continue on past the end of the game. Not to say that we don't go through the ups and downs of the game, but just remembering that even past this physical body, we go on. Yeah, we're eternal. Something I do want to bring up, and, and you and I briefly touched on this. This is another one of those, are things shifting in nature? Yeah. <laughs> you, you said this animal, and I was like, yes. There are so many blackbirds around right now. Yeah. I'm there seeing them a lot. There is an insane amount of blackbirds. There are. And I don't know what's going on. I don't I know. Don't <laughs> I don't know if it's just the time of year. <gasps> I, I don't know. But I seem to be <laughs> noticing them a lot more. And they're huge. They are. And so I, out of my curiosity, looked up what blackbird symbolism there is. Mm. And so I know that you are aware of one connection. Yes. And if you'll go ahead and explain just what you are aware of, and then I'm going to share some other sides of the coin. Okay. So uh -huh. I'm just, that's just dawned on me. So I get readings from other people, from somebody else, from somebody that I trust, my coach. So she's, I, cause this individual appeared in one of my dreams but it was it, it was very scary okay she chased me down but she was trying to get my attention apparently so and i wasn't having it <laughs> but um what's her name what's it called uh, morgana morgana thank you so blackbirds is one of her shape shifts <laughs> and she's got a bad rep you know what i'm saying but she she's usually around for somebody who needs to embrace change <laughs> even if it's for your highest and greatest good and you can't see it right now Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something important to remember is that things are for our greatest and highest good, but it doesn't always feel or look like it in the moment. Right. So what did you have? Yeah. And, and just a, another word for making a shift, right. Is adaptability. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if this, these are signs like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. it's time to adapt a little bit start being self-sustaining, work on the cleanliness of what you are putting into your body and putting out into the world. Yeah. This one was interesting. Uh, beauty. That beauty is more than skin deep. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Intuition. It is a symbol of intuition that blackbirds could be sending us a message to believe in ourselves and trust in our intuition. A few episodes back, we were talking about logic and intuition and really leaning into that and learning to trust it. Also, there was a, another episode where we were talking about receiving some intuitive messages to become a little bit more self-sustaining. And so I feel like... <laughs> kind of wrapping it all up here. So remembering to use your intelligence and it can also refer to secrets not known in this world. <laughs> all right, everybody, I'm done here. I'm done here today. We're good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Okay. In Native American cultures, when blackbirds would come in and ruin their harvests, it was an indication that they needed to honor the guardians of this world. <laughs> so again, Our friends, whether yeah. that means aliens or even just honoring mother earth, who was our ultimate guardian, by the way. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she yeah. keeps this alive. 
I mean, we're here. <laughs> we're on her. We're a part of her. It was interesting during my meditation earlier today. I couldn't get, you know, I was trying to practice going into silence in my mind without hearing silence. And so I could hear the cars driving by. I could hear, you know, somebody in their lawn in the back, you know, in one of my neighbor's homes or whatever. And I remember saying to myself, find something to focus on because my mind was just going in every direction. Mm -hmm. And I remember deciding to focus on what are you connected to? And I said, I am part of source. And if I am part of source, I am connected to the light. And if Gaia, the earth that I'm on, is also part of source, because we're all part of source, we're all part of God, then I'm also connected to her. I am a soul having a physical experience, but this body is also alive. And if this body is from earth, then it's part of Gaia. So it's all still connected. So I was imagining that. And that's what allowed me to start really tapping in. I could then see this stream of light going from up above me, down mm -hmm. through me, all the way down into the ground. I got this flash image of the tree of life and seeing the roots super clearly and how all of that was lit up in communication. You know, it was, it was fascinating because it wasn't until then that all these other beings started coming in. It makes me like humbled just like a little humbled to, to understand that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Anyway, digressing. Mm -hmm. So in Celtic tradition, that's where Morgana comes in. I believe she was like a Celtic goddess. If I, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that y'all. Blackbirds in the Celtic tradition do symbolize death, but also the rebirth. African cultures Again, back to symbolism in death and rebirth and its yearly return symbolizing that death was not the end of life. But in the Japanese culture, blackbirds were actually happy omens. They were good luck. It symbolized good luck in marriages, good luck in you know uh, business ventures, things like that. So mm -hmm. different cultures, different things. It's perception based, just like the rest of everything that we go right. through, right? Right. So the blackbird as a power animal, you can call on the blackbird in times of spiritual need. Hmm. In times of change, the blackbird can help you be more adaptive and it can also help you make better decisions. You can harness the power of the blackbird to help you uncover hidden truths that may be harmful. The common themes that I'm seeing in these are supportive of change, transformation, which death and rebirth is just other words for transformation, and uncovering hidden truths. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on right now. <laughs> so I just think that it's really synchronistic, or maybe not synchronistic. It's just interesting to recognize that we're seeing these reports in the news about these EAPs or that's, that's UAPs, UAPs, <laughs> <laughs> UAPs. And <laughs> just seeing all these blackbirds in the area, I'd be curious if any other listeners are seeing them across the country. Cause we are limited yeah. <laughs> by our location. Like, is it just in Texas? No, the blackbirds. No. It can't be. There's no way. There's no way because when we get to our reading today, you're going to be very, <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I'm kind of wondering, should we just go into have the you... card reading? Yeah. Just a second. I just want to ask you one other question. Yeah. Have you happened to have a blackbird in your dream in the last week? Yeah, they're kind of everywhere. So whether it was in that dream that I had about the tree looking thing, the mm. furry monster mm -hmm. in the tree or whatever, or there was, I mean, there were birds it, in that. If you guys have not heard this dream, I do recommend go watch the Facebook live on inner bloom that was done on February 13th, but will be released. You said on February 15th. That's correct. Yeah. Cause they have okay. a pod, the, the podcast version of that will be released on that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a wild dream. Yeah. So how many, do you recall how many like, was it a single one in a dream? Was no, it, it was a flock. It was okay. a flock because the the being 
when it was messing around in the tree or with the tree because it was as taller or if not it was as tall if not taller than the tree it shook it and the birds came out and so i remember that you know <laughs> um it's kind of weird <laughs> a flock of these birds in your dream especially if they're singing in the trees tells you to prepare for changes in your life well that i believe i believe that with the amount of you know it started off as anxiety then we tapped in we learned that the feeling and the energy that we were getting was very similar to one another we started sharing it with other people we started hearing it from other people even people we don't know then we got a new being by by the name of ara that pops in and tells us that change is coming you know now i'm getting visited by quite a few different things and they're all talking about change then we start seeing uaps and yeah it's a lot it's a lot tons and tons of things that are happening right now in the world that are being revealed to the public for once right finally finally right so with all of this happening it just it feels like momentum I wonder how all those people that in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s reported abductions or whatnot and were gaslit. I wonder how they're going to feel. Very vindicated. <laughs> Very vindicated. And hopefully not too much fear. And this whole idea of change can bring up a lot of feelings of instability. But I just want to remind you that change is happening all around us all the time. And in fact, the only constant is that everything changes. It's just a reminder. It's going to be a shift, but it's nothing new as far as change happens constantly. Absolutely. So speaking right. of change, <laughs> I think it's uh, time for the collective reading, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, woo! We got a doozy. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and bring up the three cards that I pulled. And I pulled these right before we started recording. So I have not shared all of this with Carrie, just so we're clear. All right. Let me just move some squares around here. There you go. Take a look at that. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Uh, that would be a uh, Ten of Swords. And on the Ten of Swords, we have a ton of blackbirds. Ten of just them. A, a ten flock. of them. And just in case you're wondering what deck we are using today, this is Chris Anne's, the Light Seer's Tarot. So, yeah. Very interesting. We've got a young lady, for those that are just listening on any of our podcasting platforms. Her back is to us. Her hair is blowing in the wind. She's walking towards the top of the hill. She has a yellow dress on. Looks like it's strapless. And so we don't see her face. We see her looking off into the distance, but we don't see what that distance is. So mm -hmm. our perception of it is almost like we're at the bottom of the hill looking up at her. And then above her are 10 blackbirds flying mm -hmm. above her head. Well, I mean, like, I don't need to go back into the symbolism. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, the fact that this popped right out again on top of what we were talking about, it's, it's just like a validation mm -hmm. that change is coming, that mm -hmm. if we become rigid in that change, just like a tree that is unbending in a storm breaks, that may happen too. So learning to be flexible with the change and blow in the wind. Well, you're going to love this because according to this handy dandy guidebook, because again, I'm not that great when it comes to the actual tarot, tarot. like 10 of swords and all that. So the 10 of swords comes to us in times of blinding truth. Mm, and the book does say when delusion is lifted. I know that I've mentioned it in other episodes where I think that a lot of things that have been hidden are going to come to light. Oh, yeah. Guides told us that when we were looking into the 2023 energy. I mean, when I was looking at the astrology. Yeah. Uh, too. <laughs> Look at all these validation points. I love it. This next one's my favorite. The Magician. 
It's not only my favorite because it has it has our logo on the hoodie. The infinity. Mm-hmm. So you had mentioned a hooded figure earlier today. <gasps> and I mentioned in being with green arms and no sleeves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy Scott does not have green arms, just so we're clear. But so yeah. this card, there is a person sitting with in kind of like a lotus style, but feet touching. And they have a, a dark sweatshirt hoodie over their head. And so you're not really able to see the face. You just kind of see down the nose. And it's got the infinity symbol on the hoodie. And it looks like he's doing some sort of energetic alchemy magic and he's sitting on it looks like green grass and looking down over almost into like a pond or a lake and it has that galaxy blue purple swirl to it similar to one of the cards of trusting the universe you know what's interesting is i just heard in my head was portal healing oh interesting so what are you getting from this i'm getting portal healing I've also noticed that, I don't know if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, my nails have been recently done. Yes. I have triangles on my nails and mm. there are also Oh, triangles. I didn't even see those little triangles in there. Uh, There's yeah. four of them. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, I'm curious what the tattoo is on his arm too. Let's see here. It looks like Metatron's cube. It does. So he's an energy worker. Mm-hmm. So that is is cool and And triangles are the most stable shape the Mm -hmm. strongest shape and this being the number one card in the deck so it's not zero but it's one magician it's meant the magician is usually meant to bring forth powerful message of creation and potential so it is manifesting time (laughs) y'all needless to say is it's a good time to to take on the realities that you're wanting call in if if you're wanting to see your star family if you're wanting to experience them in any way you can call out to them do your light protection bubble <laughs> and be specific and be specific right there's a lot of symbolism in this one mm-hmm. this alchemy transformation creating stability healing with healing we become more stable and that we're always connected to source. Oh, you know what's interesting? Remember when I mentioned in the meditation, I had this sense of like the source light coming yeah. in and then feeding it back down into the earth and then vice versa. Yeah. Do you see this light I behind? Now. I've never seen that looking at this card before until now. It's like there's a, a bright light behind him and it's not symmetrical and it kind of leans over to down his right arm, almost like they they are being guided by this light. Right. And I, I got that it was tracing down and then coming up. So it's like they are putting the energy down and then drawing it back out. Right. Almost like renewed energy. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. I love it when these meanings come together. Okay. Ace of go? Wands. Yeah. Ace of Wands. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Tell me what you're saying. I'm seeing third eye activation, mm-hmm. <laughs> which really does tie into what we've been talking about today. Like in the if scenario of visitors, a lot of people would wake up. And with that third eye being on fire. Mm, no. Okay. I'm just saying, I, I, I think we are, this card gives me peace with it though. I, that's what I'm getting from it. There's a peacefulness to you that well, this face with the eyes closed. Say, look and, at her face. She looks really serene. Right. She's Peace got on the eight. outside active on the inside. What a super cool head dressing. It's like some kind of net. <sighs> Do you see the shape of her head? Yes, I'm just now seeing that. <laughs> it is so alien. okay. So for those that are are listening, we didn't explain the card, so okay, I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> so basically, there's it looks like a feminine face. You uh, the card stops just below her lip line, 
and her eyes are closed. She again has a very peaceful look on her face and then her head, it extends up and beyond the top length of the card. And there is like this, this beautiful, um, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like a lacy like headdress, but it's not full, like filled in lace. Yeah, it's, so it's netted. Kind of netted. Yeah. And then her skin tone is slightly darker, but more purples and blues with a little bit of reds. And then again, she has this teardrop shape <laughs> on her forehead, right at her third eye. And it is fire. Yeah. And there is a, uh, there's a flower of life symbol, very lightly drawn in white outline. I can't, not sure if you can see it. See that. It just kind of lightly draws like the Lotus. Mm -hmm. And actually it even almost extends upward like the Hamza. Yeah. That's super cool. This is a cool card. There's a lot of spirituality in this. Yeah. But again, like she looks so peaceful on the outside, but there's so much activity going on on the inside. What does this one mean? I I'm getting activations. I'm mm -hmm. getting I heard the word surrender just now. Surrendering to the unknown. The <laughs> yeah. Surrendering to the unknown. Surrendering to the flow. Mm -hmm. All that is, is what I heard. I just heard all that is. Yeah. I'm getting this vibe of like, it's time to light that fire within. It's time to remember who you truly are. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> A time of change. Remembering yeah. you're always connected to source. You can alchemize your experience and light the fire within and look at that the uh, ace contains all the sparks for all the ideas they are generating intensely powerful light for you right now she's connecting with the one cosmic mind universal consciousness i still i, I still think it's wild that her skull is like alien <laughs> i mean you know just saying just saying oh my goodness what a beautiful uh what a interesting fun yeah what if conversation agreed agreed <laughs> it's this has been a very fascinating day to say the least and <laughs> a lot of information coming through a lot of uh a lot of visitors it seems to have been quieted down i remember after speaking about or just mentioning the being with the child they were like okay thanks that's all we wanted. And they like kind of left. So interesting, you know, just a little acknowledgement. I'm interested in seeing what plays out. What, what probability are we going to all focus upon and see how that goes? Yee. The light. That's the one I'm focused on. So audience, ask yourself which one you're focused on. Mm -hmm. All righty, y'all. And if you are enjoying our content today and any other day, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also find us on any of the social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. And Carrie and I have our own individual accounts on TikTok. We also have a website. So check us out, lovealwayself.com. Alrighty, guys, this has been an interesting conversation. And if you have anything to ask, add, You've experienced any of this? Is anybody else seeing blackbirds? Um, leave a comment. Let us know. We're curious. <laughs> Would and love to know. Even though things can be scary, again, when we lean into the light, it shines all around us, and there's nothing truly to fear except fear Absolutely. itself. So, on that note, don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Hey, listener, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, 
Remember to love first, love last, and love always. always.